Hello friends, happy Monday. Welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I have a lot of reading that I need to get done this week. I'm in the middle of two different readathons. I was toying with the idea of maybe jumping into the reading rush last minute because I'm getting a little bit of FOMO now that it's here and seeing everybody kind of do their daily vlogging and participating in that, but I'm holding off the temptation. I'm not doing that because the reason that I didn't do it in the first place was because I had already found two readathons in the month of July that the prompts spoke to me a lot better. So let's talk about those because it is more than halfway through the month of July and I need to buckle down and get some reading in this week. So my first readathon for the Horror in 24 readathon, I have eight prompts on that one and I've read two of the prompts. So I've read Mexican Gothic, which counted for the prompt read a psychological horror story. And then I read the group book, which was Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. Both of those were wonderful. I actually read them last week and I talk about them in length in my reading vlog. So go check that out if you haven't already. But I do have a lot more prompts to get through. I'm currently in the middle of reading It by Stephen King. That's for the prompt read a haunted house or ghost story. So I still need to pick up, I'm hoping to pick up either The Shuddering, Mallory, Frankenstein, or my Edgar Allan Poe book, or House of Leaves. Um, I'd like to pick up at least two of those this week to keep on keeping on with the Horror in 24 readathon. And then for the 90s pop culture readathon, I have a lot more books to read. So. so let me zoom you in on this, but this is a stack of physical books that I've read for these readathons so far. And then this is a stack of books that I still need to read, at least for my physical copies. As you can see, I've been putting off my chunkier books. I think I'm gonna knock out this guy today um, just because it's a short read and that way I can just start the week off feeling really productive with a book. Um, and then also Sky Without Stars is really intriguing me. The sequel actually just came out um, and a lot of people are reading that. So <laughs> I'm intrigued in actually reading the first book. It is very chunky so I might see if there is an audiobook. So that way I can read along with the audiobook. And then I also have, I got the audiobook of The Shadows on NetGalley. So I might flip flop between the physical book and the audiobook as well. And I'll kind of show you, these are my spreads for the readathons. So that's my Horror in 24 readathon. So for the 90s pop culture readathon, if it's highlighted, I've already read it. So as you can see, there's a lot of books that I need to get done, but I have completed, especially if you flip to the back, a lot of prompts. So, yay. Oh, and then <laughs> I actually did my August cover page yesterday because there was a quote in Survivor Song, actually, that I really enjoyed and I wanted to incorporate somehow. So I wanted to do that. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm really craving Halloween. Halloween season, spooky season, bring it to me. Simple spread, bullet journal is definitely just for me and to keep track of things. And while I like doodling and all of that, I'm not really the most artistic. I'm not compliment fishing. Um, it's not, it's not my expertise. I'm not the best at it, nor do I care to put a ton of time into spreads, but I do like doing these as like an anxiety sort of thing. Um, so there's my August spread. So I think I'm going to throw on some ASMR, like some ambient sound and pick up a book. Um, I definitely have been in such a YouTube binge lately and I've been re-watching a bunch of vlogs from like last September and October just because I'm, I'm ready for fall. I'm ready for it. I want it let's go. And every time that I put on YouTube videos as like background noise for another task, I end up just watching those. So I don't think I'm going to watch any of those, but I might. <laughs> and I also want to get some writing done. It's still Camp Nana Remo. I'm still so far behind. I'm probably never going to catch up, but something is better than nothing when it comes to writing. So I might try and write as well, um, throw on like a very autumnal soundscape or something like that. So I really don't have any plans for today. We were actually going to go to Ikea and pick up a bookshelf, which would have been exciting, but they are out of the Billy bookcase that we want. We're actually doing them on either side of our TV in the downstairs area um, to have better storage for all of like our games and DVDs and some books down there as well. We're like kind of doing our own sort of like entertainment center. So 
that was going to be a fun project for today, but they're out of it. So we can't do that. So there's not really anything to do but read, which I definitely need to get done anyway, because I have a lot of books that I need to read before the end of the month. So I will check back in with you guys a little bit later. to keep telling myself that I will not do the reading rush because everyone uploaded their day one vlogs today and I really want to watch it and I kind of want a daily vlog but my vlogging skills are not on that level yet. They would not be entertaining vlogs so um, I'm not doing it. Maybe next year. Maybe next year because I'm already up to my neck in readathons but I did get some good reading done yesterday. I read this like I said that I wanted to and this was read your favorite childhood spooky story for the horror in 24 readathon. Now this wasn't necessarily my favorite favorite um, but it is one of the ones that I have possession of and this was my introduction to Edgar Allan Poe and I really enjoy Poe's work now so I thought that would be a little fun to read and also it was very very short which is great for a readathon and it also has wonderful illustrations which were really nice to look through. Um, so this little compilation had four of Poe's short stories. It had The Black Cat, Mask of the Red Death, Hop Frog, and The Fall of the House of Usher. I like the first two better than the second two. I think as a kid I really enjoyed The Black Cat the most just because I feel like that's very cut and dry um, kind of evil guy gets his comeuppance at the end. But I have to say now I think not just pertaining to this collection but as a whole like The Mask of the Red Death is one of my favorite Edgar Allan Poe stories and it does feel a little timely that I'm reading it now um, just with people kind of ignoring legs. So I also picked up Sky Without Stars. It's over there. Um, so I'm not going to like pick it up to show you guys, but I am trying to listen to the audiobook. And then I also picked up The Shadows because I actually got a NetGalley arc of this. So let me explain. I have actually never used NetGalley before and I saw that they were doing audiobooks. So I downloaded it just to see what kind of audiobooks they had and requested The Shadows. Um, and the shadows had already come out by the time that the audiobook was available to me. So I got approved for the audiobook, but it's already out. So there's not really like that special sort of reading it before anyone else. So I was actually listening to it at work today. Um, but I do also have the physical copy that I want to read from. I did not realize that this book didn't take place in the United States. Um, and the narrators all have accents to me. Um... And of course, now that I'm looking at it, Alex North lives in Leeds, England, so he's a British crime writer. I do have to listen to it at normal speed um, so I can understand what's going on. And I do like it because I definitely don't think that I read in accents in my head. Even when this book is taking place in England, if I read it, I would be reading it in my American Midwest accent. So I am enjoying the audiobook, but it is going to be going a little bit slow a little bit more slowly so i think i'm on page 31 it's absolutely crazy to me how long audiobooks take or i guess it's crazy to me what a difference between audiobooks at one time speed versus how i read it in my head um because it definitely felt like a lot more than 31 pages but i'm 31 pages through this so that is my reading plan for today. Yesterday was actually a lot more eventful than I thought it was going to be, which was really nice. We weren't really going to go anywhere, and we ended up actually going to Barnes & Noble, and that was a lot of fun. I'm going to be showing the books that I got for Barnes & Noble in my next video, which should already be out by the time that this is being put out, so go watch that. Um, it was my latest book haul, but I did get something not bookish that I can show you guys. And that is this Funko Pop of Vulpix. 
I love her. As you can see from the background, I do collect Funko Pops. Um, and when they first came out with the three starters for Pokemon, I was really hoping that those were going to be the only ones because that's, that's a lot of Funko Pops if they're going to come out with them all. And my siblings actually asked me when they saw that I had Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. They're like, are you going to get them all? I was like, no, they don't even have them all. I'm not going to buy them all. But they keep coming out with more. So I have Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, which was all I was going to get. And then they had Pikachu, which I also got because I feel like that's low-key also a starter. I mean, Pikachu is the most iconic Pokemon. And then Eevee, I had to get Eevee um, because Eevee is one of my favorite Pokemon. And then they also have Vulpix and um, Growlithe, who I'm also planning on getting because fun facts, the very first game I played was Pokemon Fire Red and um, I was not a Pokemon master back then, but I did have a team of primarily fire Pokemon. Wouldn't recommend it. I play Pokemon now and I definitely have different types on my team, but I think my original team was Charizard, Growlithe. I had a Vulpix that I had traded with my sister because she had Leaf Green. Um, I had, I did have Vaporeon because that would, like, that's one of my other favorite Pokemon. So at least I had a water Pokemon. I think I had a Nidoqueen, but like with not very good moves. Nidoqueen's a pretty good Pokemon um, for that generation if you do good moves but I didn't have good moves because I was six. And a Rapidash. Yep, it was Pony. It was, so it was Rapidash. So I was going into the Elite Four with four of my six Pokemon being fire. That's not cool, but so yeah. I'm only buying the ones that I am very attached to, which are a lot in Gen 1, because obviously, well, not obviously, but that's what I grew up with. And I was actually talking to my siblings the other day, and we have a Switch, and um, they really want to play Let's Go Eevee. And when asked why, they're like, well, we've never played in Kanto before. That seems like a lot of fun. Um, and to me, like, Let's Go Eevee, I've played it. And it was, like, kind of nostalgic fun. But it wasn't the most fun because that's the region that I played with the most. And they never had a Game Boy Advance or anything. So they never had an opportunity to play with Kanto Pokemon, which I think is crazy. Um, but yeah, all of that to say that I got Vulpix. Um, I will not be getting any more at least of this generation, um, and hopefully they don't come out with any more generations for a while because then we're gonna run into a problem, but I just want the starters and my favorites. I did just see that they're coming out with the evolutions, and I'm gonna have to get those because I'm very basic and I love the evolutions, so I'm gonna have to get those, but that that's a very much non-reading related update but yeah so this is exciting i actually got it at gamestop because my partner wanted to go to gamestop um and then i slipped and fell and bought four books at barnes and noble which i wasn't even planning on i wasn't even planning on buying any of the books i was actually looking for a completely different book and they didn't have it and i just cover buys man <laughs> cover buys so i might check in with you guys a little bit later because it's not much of a reading update i do have a little bit more time today than i was anticipating because last night i dropped a 15 pound weight on my foot so i can't work out my toes are a little busted so i won't be able to work out so that's at least another hour to add to the reading time so i'll probably pick up the shadows this is intriguing me so i've heard this is very urban legendy like bloody mary type of stuff so i'm very excited to pick that up so i think i am going to try and finish this one i'd love to finish this one today um it's a thriller i'm very glad that this was intriguing me because i have not really read any thrillers this entire year that I've enjoyed. Hopefully this will be the first one and I will uh, check back in with you guys a little bit later. So I hope you can still hear me over the fan because I'm not turning it off, but I know I said I was going to pick up the shadows. I just wasn't really feeling it. I changed my mind. It happens. That's a day in the life of a very moody mood reader. So I read some more of Sky Without Stars and I am on page 90 something. I know that. I'm on page 95. I'm in the second half of it. Not second half. I can only wish. No, it's like I'm that far into it, but I'm in the second like section of it. It is Les Mis in space, but I will say if you've never seen Les Mis, if you've never read Les Mis or um, anything like that. If you don't know anything about Les Mis, I think you can definitely still go into the story 
and really enjoy it. It's not one, I feel like some retellings, the only way to enjoy them is to know the source material. Otherwise you feel like you're missing something. At least for this one so far, I can tell who all three of the main characters are supposed to be but I can also, like it is a story that kind of stands on its own too. So if you are intrigued by this, but have never actually like read or watched Les Mis, I think you'd still really enjoy this. So now to describe it without saying it's Les Mis in space, because it is. Um, but this is set in a future where our world went kaput, for lack of a better term. Um, the citizens, I don't know how many, but it was like a large group of people managed to get off of Earth and go to this new planet and set up a new world order where essentially there is the ruling class, like the ruling monarchy. Um, that royal family is the First Order. Is it called First Order? I have Star Wars on the brain. And there are three classes of people. The first estate is the royal family, the second estate is all the nobles, um, and the third estate is the lowly peasants. Life sucks. If you're in the third estate, like there's no middle class or whatever. Um, you're poor and you're begging and you're starving for food, or you live in this world of extreme luxury. And there are three points of view. There are two right off from the beginning, and there's one introduced a little bit later that I actually just got to. So the first point of view is Shatine, and she is in the third estate. She steals to make a living. She's basically kind of like an Aladdin sort of character. She's very good-hearted, if not a little bit jaded, um, just because you would be in that situation. So she steals to make a living um, just to put food on the table. She's trying to save up for a better life and fighting against a system that doesn't want her to succeed. So that is one point of view. The second point of view is Marcellus, and he is in the second estate. He is kind of old money. His grandfather is like in charge of the entire fighting force. I forget what they called it. I mean, essentially an army, but space themed. So he has that background. He lives in the second estate. He is training to become a warrior, um, a soldier. But you find out in his first chapter where you get his point of view, his father is actually a traitor. You don't know what about but he's kind of having that conflict of maybe wanting to know more about his father because he's very estranged from his father since his father has been in prison for as long as he's really remembered. Very loyal to the regime and this whole system, but he is a good-hearted person, so um, I think that's that's obviously definitely going to be challenged by him. And then the third point of view is Alouette. First of all, I'm definitely going to have to dive back into the audiobook to really get those pronunciations down because French is not something that I ever took in school so but she is actually a part of this like secret underground society of nuns um and I've only read one chapter by her and it was very short not by her I've only read one of her point of view chapters and it was very short but it almost seems like these nuns are kind of like contraband like no one really knows they exist they don't exist in the society they're very self-sustaining and they're completely removed um they're kind of like switzerland in this whole thing um they don't agree with the systems and they're just staying out of it but an interesting thing about this is that when they traveled from earth to this new planet they got rid of reading and writing so that is just a, another form of oppression so that's like an interesting little tidbit because that's very demoralizing like it's very hard to organize if you don't know how to read or write so, so I'm actually at a pretty good spot in my reading right now because I have two books and I have two audiobooks for them too so I can definitely flip back and forth between work I can listen to the audiobooks and then at home I can read the physical books and um, that's definitely not something that I have the luxury of doing all the time. I definitely don't always have an audiobook copy and then a physical copy, but I just so happen to have book of the month versions of both of these books. For Sky Without Stars, it is on Scribd for free, well, with a membership. And then The Shadows, like I mentioned before, I got on NetGalley as a free arc. So I'm taking advantage of that while I can, and I will check back in with you guys tomorrow.
started annotating my very first book. That's so nerve-wracking to say. I've been wanting to do it for a while and actually I've been planning since about last year to start annotating but only ones that I know I'm going to reread, only my favorites, because just for me it's not something that like I necessarily want to do um, all the time when I'm reading, just for pretty much rereads of favorites, ones that I know that I'm going to want to read again. I started with It, which is one of my favorite books. Um, probably was not the best decision f just in terms of readathons because I had to start over from the beginning and it's already a super huge book. So that was like not the best move, but I've already known this is like the newest hardcover copy of It. Um, I believe you can still buy at least the paperback version of this cover in stores still. Um, I am trying to get my hands on the original hardback version of it because I absolutely love that um, with like the storm drain and all of that. And also just because it is one of my favorite books, I do want two copies of it. Um, just so if I ever want to lend one out, I know that I'm going to have one on my hands at all times because I feel like we all know how that goes. Sometimes you lend out a book and you don't really get it for a while sometimes you don't get it back at all so I've known that I've wanted multiple copies for some time now and this is one of my favorite books so I decided to take the plunge and start um, I was just having like a really bad time with my anxiety um, yesterday and lately like bullet journaling has really been helping my anxiety but I didn't really have any spreads I didn't want to make a spread just for the sake of I needed to help my anxiety so I was trying to think of other little projects that I wanted to do um, that was just purely like escapist just focusing on something other than my brain I did get these brand new um, zebra mild liner creative markers they're essentially just really nice highlighters and they are double pointed so they have the regular highlighter tip and then also like a little marker tip as well. So I took the plunge and I started. So I started from page one last night and I'm on page 258. Honestly, like I'm not doing that much. Like if you can see, I might highlight a line here and there. Um, but it's not a lot, but it's a start. And I gotta say, I had a really fun time doing it. So I will say the most challenging part was picking out, um, I wanted a different color for each kid in the Losers Club. And then I wanted one for the turtle, um, like all mentions of the turtle, and then another one for omniscient narration and it or Pennywise himself. So I have quite a few colors going on here, but I think they all look quite nice. So that's really the biggest reading update that I have for today. That's obviously been taking me a little bit. Um, Sky Without Stars, I am, I'd say three fourths of the way through it. I like it. I am running into the problem that pretty much I have with almost all retellings is that since I kind of know what is going to go on in the plot, I don't have like a burning desire even when there are like plot twists. When there are big reveals, you kind of already know it if you know the source information. So I've been reading it slower than someone who probably isn't familiar with Les Mis would be reading it, but I am enjoying it. It is a very good retelling. It's a very creative retelling, um, and I probably will be picking up the sequel too. So don't think that um, I don't like it because I'm reading it so slow, but I have noticed that probably I would be reading it a bit faster had it not been for me kind of already knowing what's coming next. This is also one where I potentially feel like the main characters could be aged up and it'd be more of like an adult book instead of YA just based on the things that they need to do aka um, spearhead revolution. I'm not saying that young people can't change the world. They absolutely can. I fully believe in that but just sometimes um, I feel like just in terms of character like life experiences and their perspectives and um, how good they are at certain things, it would make more sense had they been aged up. It would make a lot more sense. For example, like one of the characters, she is, I believe 17 or 18 and she's like the master thief. Um, she's a pro at her art. She's like her and her family are like the best of the best, but she's still younger, which I feel like if she were a little bit older, it would make more sense for her to be the best at what she does. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I really enjoy the audiobook. It is really helping me out because a lot of the words are French inspired or just French in terms of origin. I've never taken a French class before so pronunciation um, would have been very rocky for me had I not picked up the audiobook in tandem with reading the physical book. I really enjoy two out of the three narrators. Um, the only narrator that I don't like, I wouldn't mind her for a different story. Her voice is actually very soothing and her narration 
animation itself is very lovely, but she sounds like she's in her mid-30s and the character's supposed to be 17, so that's just strange to me because she also does sound a lot older than the other two narrators and one of the other narrators, there's kind of like a romance between them, so it's a little weird, um, but like the narrators sound so different in terms of age, but again, minor nitpicky sort of things. I am enjoying it. Um, probably will pick up the sequel, so I'll give you another update when I'm done with that. I haven't picked up any more of the shadows, and that's unfortunately been like a very typical thing for me this year. I've noticed in terms of thrillers, I can't tell you how many I start, and even if I really like what's happening and I'm invested in the story, I'm just not invested. Um, I feel like I either have to read them in one sitting or I'm just not going to finish them. I don't know what that's about. Actually, it's possibly because all of the thrillers that I was anticipating this year, like in my most anticipated releases of 2020, I haven't liked them. So um, that's probably it. Um, thrillers just aren't really clicking with me right now, but I do really want to finish this and get to it sooner rather than later. Um, because I have heard good things about the shadows, so I'm hoping get that done eventually. So I will check back in with you guys later with another reading update, whether that be just another little update on my annotation process and it, or whether it's I've finished hopefully Sky Without Stars by the end of tonight. Sunday you guys. Today has been a day and um and a half. A day and a half. I woke up and I had to be at work in like 20 minutes and it's a 20 minute drive so I ran a little bit late for work today so that was very frustrating and um hard way to start the day. But I got home. I passed out. It's now 4 12. Um yeah so the reason why is I did have to work at 7 a.m. I usually work at 9 a.m. so that was why um was a little unprepared for the day, I guess. So I worked from 7 to noon, came home, ate, passed out. Um, and now I'm back about my day again. I've actually been reading The Shadows, so I'm very proud of myself. I've gotten to page 108, so that is further than pretty much any other thriller I've gotten since the beginning of June maybe. I've just DNF'd a ton of thrillers this year. Um, and sorry I look so rough. Let me tell you, masks have been really doing my face dirty and I don't know how to correct that. You're welcome, world. That's, that's my contribution, um, is I'm wearing a mask so I'm not an a-hole, but then it makes my face, like, I, I've been breaking out more this past month than I have since I was a teenager, so that's been a lot of fun, but I'm trying to let my skin breathe. But I did finish A Sky Without Stars last night, I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, I know how I feel about it. I enjoyed it. It was an enjoyable read. But this is not a duology as I thought it was. It is at least a trilogy. Um, I don't know if there's going to be another book after the third book, but there has been a third book announced. I don't know if I'm going to be continuing with the series just because I really love one of the main points of view. The other two I don't really care about and I don't really care about a like the love triangle going on. So I do think this is one of the best kind of retellings that I've read in a while. I don't know, just based on the characterization, that I'll want to pick up two more books in the series. So I don't know if I am going to continue on with the series. It's it's up in there. Again, the world building is really neat. I really enjoy the retelling aspect. Les Mis in space is wonderful. Um, just I don't know if liking only one out of the three main characters is good enough to keep on continuing. And again, I wish this would have been adult fiction. Um, I just felt like if it had been aged up a little bit more, it would have been a little more enjoyable for me. Um, that being said, if you have read the second book in this series, let me know down below if it's worth it to continue. And I guess I should let you know Shatin is the character that I like. I don't really care for Alouette or Marcellus. And by I don't care for... I don't actively dislike them, but I just, every single time that I'm at one of their points of view, 
I'm waiting to get to Shatine again. So let me know if you've read it down below, if I should continue reading. But I have made it um, like a third of the way through, I almost said The Whisper Man, that's not it. I hope I didn't say The Whisper Man at the beginning of this clip, but it's The Shadows by Alex North. And I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the more supernatural elements in here. If you're into true crime and you've heard of like the Slender Man killing incident where two young girls thought that Slender Man from Creepypasta had come to them and commanded them to kill one of their friends, this reminds me a lot of that. There is actually a man, I think he's just called like the Shadow Man or the Shadows, something like that. And all of these boys are trying to lucid dream so they can get into each other's dreams. And there's two different points, there's two different timelines. The first timeline is the main character, he is a boy and a group of him and his new friends are trying to lucid dream together. And that's going to turn out very bad for him um, because in the other timeline, which is in present day, you learn that um, one of his friends was killed by two of the other friends. And then there was just a copycat killer in another town. And this female detective is trying to figure out what's going on there, especially since Charlie Crabtree, the boy who was the mastermind behind the first murder has never been found again. And he was a young boy when it happened. So that's like the stuff of urban legends. Um, and someone who's claiming to be him helped these boys in the second timeline commit murder. So she's looking for him, trying to figure out if he even exists. So that is the basis of this. So I'm really liking the urban legend um, and then like the lucid dreaming parts of it as well. I honestly think that I am actually going to end the vlog off here just to give myself a little bit of a break because I'm starting a new vlog on Monday. So to recap, I read Sky Without Stars this week and this was about 500 pages. So this took me a lot of time. I'm still reading it. I'm still annotating it. And I am on page, I believe, 400. I just got to the section Dairy, the second interlude. Um, so it's kind of picking up. If you know it, you know that book is a slow, slow journey. But I really love it. We're just meeting all the kids and learning their kind of inciting moment with it. The moment where they each meet it on their own for the first time, which prompts them to join up into the Losers Club. So that's been really fun, like 400 pages in and the adults haven't even made it to meet each other yet. They're just all on their way. So you gotta love that about a slow burn book. And then um, I read 100 pages of The Shadows this week as well. Tune in next week to see if I actually managed to complete a thriller and finish The Shadows um, and hear my thoughts about that one because I feel like depending on how it goes, um, I'm going to really enjoy it or really not enjoy it. I always tell myself that I feel like I really should be into thrillers with paranormal elements because I love horror, but they never go far enough for me. I really like Simone St. James, um, but her paranormal thrillers are very paranormally and aren't afraid to be so. I like that so much better um, than paranormal thrillers where it's actually like a guy in a mask the whole time. So that is going to be it for me for this week. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, my next video coming up is going to be my mid-year book stats. So if you're interested in seeing um, how I've been reading this year, what kinds of books I've been reading this year, that's going to be going up on Thursday and then I'll have a new weekly reading vlog next week. So check back in for that. Give it a like, comment, subscribe for more content from me, and I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye!